A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him, because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. I think that uh, this particular passage from the Gospel of John is interesting because it seems to be, it, well, it talks about how Jesus and the Father are one and how we as uh, people of faith who place our uh, trust in Jesus are with the Father. It kind of goes around that. Uh, he also mentions in the Gospel today that he will send an advocate, the Holy Spirit, who will guide us. And so this, very, this whole uh, passage is rather, I guess you could say, Trinitarian. And um, of course, we are Trinitarian Christians. We believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. And, uh, but I like to um, contemplate the fact that in this uh, particular Gospel, kind of sandwiched in, um, that part about being an orphan, I will not leave you an orphan in the Holy Spirit. The, the, there's a kind of bookend around this teaching, and it, it's all to do with the commandments. And Jesus says, those, those who love me will keep my commandments. He says that right at the very beginning of this passage. And then at the end of the passage, we hear, and those who love me will be loved by my Father. And so so if, if we love Jesus, we will keep his commandments, and, um, and if we do that, then we will be loved by the Father. This is the, the summary, I guess, of that, of that particular part of this teaching. I think that um, we might uh, consider this teaching about keeping the commandments a reflection from Jesus' perspective on, let's call it the do's and the don'ts of godly love. The do's and the don'ts of godly love. Now, of course, all of us, probably when we were uh, in grade school a long time ago, for those of us who are my age, uh, we probably uh, learned the Ten Commandments. If we went to a catechism or religious ed, or maybe we were a student at Catholic school, uh, we, learned, we learned the Ten Commandments, we memorized them, and um, we were taught, of course, that uh, these Ten Commandments are kind of basic rules and regulations about how to live, uh, live a life of faith. And, um, you know, we might uh, think of, you know, like various uh, film, uh, f film situations, movies, where uh, the Ten Commandments were presented to Moses. We've had all that kind of stuff in our mind, I think, at least I do. And, uh, but it's interesting, as I can contemplate these, uh, the Ten Commandments, uh, and w with this sense that Jesus sort of mentions the commandments in the Gospel today when he says, those who love me will keep my commandments. He's, you know, sort of speaking of the commandments of God and perhaps other aspects of Jesus' teaching. But then he says, you know, though, if, you keep my, if you keep the commandments, then um, you will love me and you will be loved by the Father. This is all very interesting. Keeping the commandments of God. It's interesting to note 
that seven of the Ten Commandments, seven, the vast majority of the Ten Commandments, have to do with um, how to treat other people, how to respect them, to show them mercy, um, to show them um, God's love and kindness, I think. And so we have these commandments, the first of which point to our um, need to place every, all of our trust in God and to respect God. But we have commandments about honoring our fathers and mothers. We have commandments about not killing or, or not stealing. Um, you know, these are all commandments that have something to do, n not, not directly with how I uh, relate and respect my God and praise God, but rather uh, the evidence of godly love has something to do with the way that I treat other people. This is really interesting to me. And Jesus tells us that we have to follow these commandments. I find it interesting, you know, if you look to other parts of the New Testament, Jesus says, for example, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill them. He said this in the fifth chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. And he uh, emphasizes that these commandments will, will, will always be in effect. So the commandments of God and the teachings of Jesus have some, something um, greatly in common that I think we need to pay, atten pay attention to. What is that? I think there is an exceptional emphasis in the teaching of Jesus, especially in light of the do's and the don'ts of the commandments. There is an exceptional emphasis on his part uh, which focuses on the virtue of love. That's it. Love. Those seven commandments that have mostly to do with other people have everything to do with showing God's love to them. And the first of the commandments have everything to do with loving and respecting God. So the commandments can primarily be brought down to one word, love your neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. We know that, the golden rule. But let's be honest, and if you're like me, that we might have harbored some resentments towards others, anger, hatred, maybe desire for revenge, maybe some um, thought that we're better than somebody because we did this or that, and um, maybe in a prideful way, considering ourselves, say, arrogantly better than anybody else. Some people come to that point. And, uh, but these kind of attitudes and dispositions are quite contrary, completely contrary to the do's and don'ts of the Christian life. These are contrary to these commandments of God which place such an emphasis on love of others. Oh well, sure, uh, people who've done wrong must take responsibility for their actions. I'm not saying that we shouldn't not, um, in, with justice, point out people's errors and perhaps have remedies in which they can take responsibility for those errors. But even so, love must be our starting point for the way that we treat others. And that means all others. All others. Love must motivate every single one of the commandments that we follow if we truly love our neighbors as ourselves. I think this is the, the gospel in a nutshell. Jesus says, those who love me will keep my commandments, and those who love me will be loved by my Father. Let's strive to be people who love. And uh, as we celebrate this Mass today, let's not forget that the Father who loves us more than we can possibly imagine is the same Father who offers to us his very Son, who enables Jesus to embrace the cross to become the perfect sacrifice. Why? So that God can show us that love so much that he promises to save us to forgive us our sins 
and to bring us to life. These are all ideas we celebrate during this Easter season. And so those who love Jesus will love his commandments. And those who love Jesus will be loved by my Father. Today, as we receive this Eucharist, as we, um, uh, as we agree, if we, we guarantee, we, we uh, affirm that Jesus is present to us in this Eucharist, that he's here with us, and he offers himself completely to us out of love. And he calls us, if we are to receive this Eucharist, to put that love into practice by the way we live our lives on the other side of the chapel doors. This means doing those things which we know we're supposed to do and not doing things we know we're not supposed to do, all in love, because God commands us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Have a nice day, everybody, and again, Happy Easter.